Hello everyone. Our next topic for this description writing series is non-valvular aphid. So, the task says, you are FY2 in medicine. Mrs. Andrea Brighton, age 81, weight 62 kg, was diagnosed with non-valvular AFib. Patient had cabbage 10 years ago. He was admitted to medical ward and developed hospital-acquired pneumonia. She has been given 200 mg per oral doxycycline stat. Her recent EGFR is 31. Please prescribe maintenance dose of doxycycline for five days. Please prescribe her regular medication, Pixaban 5 mg BD and Atinolol 25 mg OG. So if you look at the task, there are some information. There is some inform important information written here. Age, so she's an elderly lady. Weight, 62. And diagnosed with non-valvular AFib. Recently, she had uh, an infection. And after that, she has been given doxycycline. Now, stat dose has been given. We need to prescribe maintenance dose for five days. And regular meds are apixaban and tenolol. So first thing should be you have to check the interaction between either of these. If there is any interaction, then you have to change it accordingly. But another thing that was there is her EGFR, which is 31. So she has some kidney damage and we have to check the BNF for renal dosing of these medications. There are three medications mentioned in the task. And for these three, you have to check renal adjustment. So if you look at the renal impaired por impairment portion of BNF, you will see on BNF, when you will look at the doses of the drugs, you will see uh, after the initial dose, in renal impairment section, you can find renal dosing for all the drugs. If you check for etinolol, it says maximum 50 milligram if EGFR is 15 to 35 and maximum 25 milligram daily or 50 on alternate days if it is less than 15. So EGFR is 31. So the dose is okay. We don't have to do anything. For this, Apixaban, prophylaxis of stroke. So all these anticoagulants, there are different kinds of uh, indications on the BNF. You can give them for prophylaxis of stroke or uh, systemic embolism. You can give them as a treatment dose for DVT-PE. You can give them for prophylaxis of DVT-PE. So you have to check the right one. So here, you in the question, it's mentioned that it is for non-valvular AFib. So that's why we are going to check this section. If it was PE or DVT or something else, we would have checked in that section. So it says five milligram BD, alternatively 2.5 milligram twice daily reduced dose used in patient with at least two of the following. Age, 80, 80 years and over, body weight 60 kg or less and, or serum creatinine 133 um, micromole per liter and over. If you go back, there are three criteria here, body weight, age, and serum creatinine. So if you go back, and look at the age, it is more than 80. So one criteria, weight is more than 60. That was another. So we are okay in this one, but EGFR is low. Creatinine is mentioned there about 131. EGFR is not mentioned there, but this EGFR is quite low. So we will change this Apixaban. You can check creatinine clearance based on the weight and everything. I think it will come around 30, 34, 35. So we will go with the lower dose for the time being. So a Pixaban dose, we need to change it from 5 milligram to 2.5 milligram BB. Atenolol will stay the same. And doxycycline, if you don't know the maintenance dose, you can open BNF, go into the initial part, check the number for index. And then from index, you can find out um, doxycycline. Go in D, find do doxycycline, check the dose, and then write down the correct dose. So if you see this portion, initial portion has already been filled. 
suppose that we have already filled that portion. So you will come on this anticoagulant portion, write a pixa band, write down the proper dose, root, start it. And normally these blood thinners are given for three to six months. So you don't have to put an end date here. So then your signature, GMC number, additional information you can write down EGFR because you are changing the dose. And on your when you are discharging the patient, you have to inform GP that dose has been changed. And then comes morning and evening. And this thing, this thing, the dates, dates can go on this portion as well, right? So you can write down the dates here and time, you can insert the times here, okay? Although morning and evening is written, but if you check this portion, date and month, you can write down the date here. And then if you are writing it down here, you don't have to write it down here. You can just uh, circle the required timing and you can insert the timing next to the morning and evening. Okay, so it was first thing. And then you will go to antibiotic section and write down doxycycline. 200 milligram stat you give. And after that, you have to give 100 milligram per oral. And uh, date you are going to write down. And then you the thing that is left is the uh, timing. So here you have to put down the timing, whatever timing it is. And then you are going to give it to the patient. After giving the stat dose, doxycycline can be given once daily. So any time should be fine. Ideally, if you have given stat dose, for example, in morning, then next dose should be given in the morning. So you can put any time, say 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. This portion needs to be filled. So here you will write down the time and circle it. And then for next five days, patient is going to have doxycycline. Uh, dose is written here. Root is written here. Start date, stop date. And then indication is hospital acquired. Then comes ethinolol. Again, same thing. Dates you can write on the top of the page, like I mentioned earlier. Like here. And then ethinolol in the regular portion. Not on antibiotic, not on anticoagulant, on the regular portion. And you are going to give once it was written in the task OD, right? OD is once daily. So once daily in the morning, dose, root, start date, stop date. If these are regular meds, then we don't write stop date, your name and signature. If additional information you want to write down EGFR, you can write it down here. Okay, that was it. Thank you.